We have all heard the fusion of great power and great responsibility. With such great power, we are called to serve and protect the oppressed, those who can defend themselves against unbeatable odds. Atreidean justice has a stern warning for the men on the shore. Drop your weapons and return to your homes in peace. But even though he is holding a ship in his hands, the men on the shore still think he is bluffing, calling it nothing but illusions and begin to open fire on him, leading to a direct battle between Atreidean justice and the men. But while he fought them, he noticed that all these men were unfortunately fully possessed by the astral wolves, leading to him having to kill some of them because their body is nothing more than a husk for the entity at this point. Atreidean Justice was able to fight off the astral wolves and save one of the men who felt greatly remorseful for what he did while possessed by the astral wolves, for what was most likely years, telling Atreidean Justice that he should kill him. But Atreidean Justice offers him something better, forgiveness, then takes him to a nearby village telling them to judge him with mercy. Flashback to four months earlier, one night as Rick was heading home, something shot across the sky at an insane speed. So he decided to go check it out. But on his way there, he attempted to contact the sheriff office for backup, but he was unable to get a signal. When he gets to the crash site, he came to the conclusion that it was one of two things happening. Either he had a concussion or he was witnessing an alien battle. But even though he is unsure of what's going on, he opens fire at one of the entities managing to strike it through the chest, leading to it disintegrating. He then approaches the other alien whose name is Dox that thanks him for his aid and tells him that he means him no harm. Dox then explains to him that the entity Rick just shot is known as the Father of Evil. The Father of Evil recently accidentally discovered the planet Earth and wants to consume the entire world. Dox explains to Rick that he is a warrior of the Swords of Justice, the purest essence of justice and light reflected in hope and love in the universe. Such power must be shared with those who are worthy and because Rick fearlessly helped Dox, he was worthy of becoming a warrior of the Swords of Justice, giving Rick the flame telling him that he is now baptized and forgiven and now holds the greatest power that exists before fading away. Rick immediately gets the hang of his powers and rockets off into Earth's orbit, declaring that he will be the sword's Atreidean justice. Elsewhere, the father of evil is furious that of all creatures, the sword of justice has chosen humanity, calling for Throat, the astral wolf, to go down to Earth and just keep an eye on Rick. When Rick got home, he explained everything that had happened with Doc to his wife. And he tells her that through all the pain and hurt our family has been through, she is worthy, giving her the flame and she became Iron Angel. Back to the present, Rick is engaged in a shootout with a local gang, demanding them to put their weapons down. But then he noticed that the men were actually being controlled by the astral wolves. So in the heat of the moment, he takes his Atreidean justice form and dispels them from the men. But all the men except one were angry that he took away their power. But Rick tells them that they would be at the mercy of justice. But for Tyrone, the only person that was glad he was freed, he tells him that he can be cleansed from his sins if he chooses to be. And when Tyrone says I do, Rick tells him to go forth and sin no more. As Rick heads home, he ponders on if it's even right for him to be using his powers while on a job wondering how can he even balance the use of his powers while on a job. However, his train of thought is cut when he comes across his son Stone and tells him that they need to talk. Stone has been struggling with something for a while and just seems to not be able to shake it and get back on track. But Rick tells him that he understands what it's like to make mistakes and that he understands what it feels like to feel undervalued, especially when you know that you are capable of something more. Stone tries to refute his father by stating all he does is keep screwing up everything. But Rick encourages his son by reminding him of the family he has and his kid that believes in him. Eventually going into the Atreidean justice form and saying it's time you finally forgive yourself and that he forgives him too. He passes the flame on to his son. And Stone cries out in pain as the flames transform him and his father continues to tell him to push away those demons. They can't control you anymore. You have carried this burden for so long and now it is borne away. Stop fighting it and become what you are called to be. And Stone transforms into Lion Stone. Rick and Stone then head to Stone's home and passes the flame to Liz, Stone's wife, and their son. 
Later that day, Rick recaps his wife on all that happened, all while Throat has been continuing his mission on spying on Rick. The next day, while flying around, Rick discovers a ship floating in mid-air and calls his family to meet him at the current location immediately. When they got there, it seemed as if Rick vanished out of nowhere. But he calls them inside the ship and says, apparently, we now have a ship to help us in the upcoming war against an evil force, which he won't be able to fight alone. But Stone reminds him that he has his family to fight alongside him, which is actually what scares Rick the most of all. Elsewhere, Throat reports his observation back to the father of evil, detailing how in a short span of time, Rick assembled an entire team made up of his family. And the father of evil is furious, stating that Earth should have been destroyed by now, and they will stamp out the virus aka Rick and his family and consume every damned soul on Earth, giving the entities with him instructions to go forth with their tasks immediately, as he will carry out his task of taking apart every single piece of Rick's life. And with that, Let's put a trade and justice issue 1 on our explanations Christian judgment scale. For the story, it's a 2.5 out of 5 on our judgment scale. I must start off by saying that I do like the concept of a trade and justice and think it's a pretty cool character concept and series concept. But the flow of this story, especially the plot of this one, felt like one of those stories that things just worked out because the story wanted things to work out. Especially the recruitment of Rick's entire family, like his son's entire family, in one night. Even the father of evil that took me a reread to see how it was that Rick was the one who killed him. Because on the first two panels, all the bullets literally bounced off of his chest. But in the next panel, he had like a lightning hole in his chest and was vaporizing. So at first I thought, oh... Rick bought Ducks enough time to take him out from behind because that was the angle we got from the top panel. But then as I read it, I was like, no, but the father of evil forgot to bulletproof that one spot on his chest or the last bullet had armor pacing rounds. Ducks imbuing Rick with power of the Sword of Justice felt very much like a Hal Jordan's Green Lantern origin. And to me, that's not a bad thing at all, as it's one of the elements of the comic I liked a lot. Even Rick going on to immediately understanding his power is something I don't mind either, as it made for cool fight scenes. That's not what dropped the score of this comic. It's the instant recruitment of the family element of the comic that I think could have been fleshed out more. Rick's wife I understand as she chose to take his hand after hearing the story of how Rick got his powers that night. But Stone caught me off guard as it seemed like he had no choice in the matter because he himself was caught off guard. But the pacing of the story failed to make me care about Stone and his family and the fact that they got imbued with power like Rick. Because I want to know what was the mistake that Stone made or was making that was so bad that it was referenced throughout the entire comic that he even needed to be forgiven for which is a different discussion for the theological section of the review or why he had to push away the demons. I am kinda invested at this point and it's one of the things in stories where the plot just works because the plot just needs to work out that annoys me where a lot of emphasis is placed on something like whether it's a person's past or an item that we as the readers should care about. Like whenever it's brought up, the text bubble literally puts it in bold. But that thing is never revealed and is just brushed away from existence. That kind of makes that whole aspect of the story where we should be rooting for stone fall flat. Because the story went so fast, even though this was a 34 page long comic, that there wasn't anything really for me to care about stone. And that's how I feel towards the rest of the family. At least with Rick, his selflessness was fleshed out and I can root for Rick, but the rest of the family, it feels unearned. I don't care about them because there was nothing for me to really see, to really care about them. Like yeah, even though when they are being granted their power, it talks about hardship and pain in a way that we should be rooting for them, but one text bubble is not enough to really build that connection for us to really care about them. The way I think the story was trying to make us care. Like Union Star, Stone, 
and Liz's son got bestowed his power in his sleep farm. There's no connection for me to care. I feel a better connection to the two guys who got delivered from the astral wolves who are just through like just side characters, throwaway characters, Tyrone and the guy from the beginning of the book that I feel about the entire supporting cast because the story didn't make me care about them. It just inserted them into the story, gave them superpowers. Boom, we're a super family. And usually in most super family style books or media, for example, you could look at Shazam with that entire family. They made you care about the family. There was actually world building and some law around the family that when they were bestowed with power, you're like, cool, the family is bestowed with power. But this book, I don't care for the family. There was no form of build-up or character development with the family for me to care about it. It all feels unearned. And that's my main criticism with this issue of Atreidean Justice, where it just failed to make me care. The way I think that the book wanted me to care about this family, especially wanted us to care about Stone. Because if I honestly think that if we had like even a panel extra to actually know what Stone did that was so bad, it would have sold it even better. Because then we could have rallied behind them and be like, wow, this family really persevered through this. This guy was really trying his hardest and his best but when you just make it ambiguous down to mistakes 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 kind of like how they say like oh it's none of your business fine it's none of my business then i don't care <laughs> you understand caring making the reader care about the characters i think is really important we need to understand their struggle what is the motivation behind them and why we should care that this family went from whatever hardship they were going through to now being imbued with power because without knowing that it's just like uh they're imbued with power okay then it's not like the whole war with um the father of evil was fleshed out i would be like yeah we definitely need folks to be rallying against the father of evil like he got shot through the chest He's not threatening, at least how the, with the story right now, for me to really be like, oh, he is this big bad threat. Like, he got shot through the chest by the fourth bullet. He forgot to block the fourth bullet from piercing him. He looks like a chum, really and truly. If a pistol bullet is able to take down the big bad of the series, then there's a little bit for me to really think that for everybody finale would just be like put him with a big stone and he will fall over that's how it is it failed to make me care about the conflict or the supporting cast of the story they what they did with rick was really well done that kind of like green lantern and i don't i like to compare just like draw a point of reference from other stories i hope i don't do it in a way to take away from what the author of the comic did that saying oh this is just a knockoff i'm not calling it a knockoff of green lantern but that aspect of the story where we saw rick's selflessness it made me care for rick because we saw that he was selfless it fleshed out the character of what kind of person he was but the rest of his family and even the villain it failed to make me care the villain was defeated by a gun bullet easily disintegrated back to wherever he came from from a bullet from a gun and the family was just like we're we've been bestowed with power and even the ending oh wow i just realized that we have a ship we just found a ship like the story worked out because the story needed to work when it comes to artwork and creativity it's a three out of five on our scale it isn't the flashiest but it was pretty good and i do like the character designs of everyone and that selfie shot with um liz where she after she got her power the family was taking a selfie shot and she was the one taking a picture with her phone but used a super speed to be in the shot and the thing run back around to still catch the thing that was that was a nice creative touch it made me laugh a bit i did like that a lot <laughs> when it comes to theological basis which refers to how well christian principles are adapted in a piece of christian fictional work which is really and truly the bread and butter of our christian fiction judgment scale it's a three out of five because i think i understand what seems to be an allegorical approach to grace and salvation through the sword of justice and the rav the author of the comic if 
I am reading too deep into it. Do let me know. But there is room for some wonky things, if not fleshed out correctly. Seeing Rick handing out forgiveness and seemingly burning people's sins away. And an alien telling a human that you have been baptized and forgiven. You may or may not know that this channel, we are all about elevating theologically sung fiction after being fed up of seeing mainstream fiction continuously twist and disrespect Christian values or try to pull in Christian values into a story and then it, we realize that it's so antithetical to many major gospel aspects. For example, Zatara, the Christian sorcerer from season three of Young Justice. We have many old videos covering those topics, but whether it may be the form of the Thundercats getting right with Jesus and reenacting the books of Samuel, Kings and Chronicles, or angels burning people to a crisp when they try to get to heaven without salvation, those are themes of Christian comics and the channel that we are going to and have covered. I just care about accurate theological representation in my fiction. Not according to what are the nomination things, but according to the word of God. And that comes with obviously a lot of creative license after all. My favorite series on the channel features John the Apostle not dying, living into the 21st century and assembling a group of warriors to fight against the premature rise of the Antichrist. Or another book that Atreian Justice is seen in is Biblical Proportions. Which my oversimplification of the book is about a resurrected Nephilim who is going around wreaking havoc throughout the multiverse. Yeah, there's a lot of creative license and liberty when it comes to theological aspects in fiction. But if it starts to drift a little too far into that category of like a bit too far, we'll sound the alarm like we did with Alpha Red issue 2. But that's it for now. This gets a 3 out of 5 on a theological basis. When it comes to my enjoyment and how likely I am to recommend it against all the other comics that we have covered, I like the concept of the story and the main character a lot, but it failed to make me care for the supporting cast thus far and the adventure to come. So it's a 2.5 out of 5. So overall, a trade and justice issue one by Ralph Madrigal, who recently joined Starcross Comics, gets a 2.75 out of 5 from the explanations. Let me know what you think of the comics based on what was discussed in the comments below. Do you agree with me or do you have a different take than I do? The link to purchase the comic will be in the description. And I must disclose that Ralph did reach out to me to cover the comic. We are... Uh, we have also been re-monetized, so instead of going to the description, I think if you look on the top right hand corner of your screen, the info card should take you directly to the Starcross Comics website to purchase this issue of A Trade on Justice. And if you would like for me to cover your comic or check it out, be sure to hit me a DM at the explanations on most social platforms or via our Discord server or through the form on our gospel infused fiction on our website. If you enjoyed the video, then why not consider leaving a like on it and subscribing for more reviews and coverage of comics made by professing believers. If you enjoyed the video to the point you want to check out another one on the channel, then be sure to click the card at the top right hand corner of your screen to check out our future Atreidean Justice reviews or check out this video that YouTube thinks you will like next.